Hey guys, it's uh, Matt Morozik, aka MVM3897 here. Thanks to everyone for checking out my YouTube channel so far. It's been really cool. Kind of enjoying this whole YouTube thing. Um, as promised, I'm going to do, start doing some tutorials. Um, the kit I'll be working on is my GNX Master Grade, which I kind of showed you earlier uh, in my intro videos. Um, the pose is going to be in and everything. But, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of debating as far as uh, how I should do tutorials. There's so many people with tutorials out there and everything. So I'm going to do my tutorials based on the assumption that you guys don't know anything. <laughs> so, um, excuse me if I go over some really simple, um, you know, simple processes and things that you guys might already know. But I'm just going to start from the beginning and work my way that way. And the first thing I'm going to start off with is uh, kind of some airbrush maintenance. Now, um, I'm not the best at keeping my airbrush clean. Typically, um, I clean it really good once before each kit. And so, here's my airbrush. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it very well in the light here, it's still kind of dirty from the last time I used it. It's still got some paint on the outside and everything. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna take this thing apart. I'm gonna show you how I clean it. And um, just give you some ideas on how to maintain your airbrush so you get best performance. So, um, the one I use is the Iwata HP CS. It's a dual action. Dual action meaning that in order for it to work, you push the trigger down to start the airflow. To get your paint to start flowing, you have to pull back on the trigger. The further you pull back the trigger, the more paint comes out at once. And this is very important when, you, when it comes to shading as far as this action going. And I will show you how that comes into play when I show you how I do my shading. So first off, um, let me sh show you my setup. Um, I have my airbrush here. I have a uh, water trap right below it, which also is nice because it acts as like a pistol grip. So before I didn't have this, it was just by itself, and my hand used to get so cramped. I mean, my thumb would get numb after a days with the airbrushing. I couldn't feel it for a few days. Having this on there gives me a better grip. It allows me to control a little bit better, and let lets my hand loosen up a little bit. <clears throat> And then from there, I just have my air hose, which goes directly into my air compressor, which is right here. And below my air compressor, there's another water trap. And you can actually see, um, let me zoom in a little bit, that you can see that there's some moisture in there. And so, right now it's turned off. I'll turn it on. It's not that loud. It's pretty quiet. I got this whole airbrush set up in the compressor from a store called uh, Airbrush Depot online. And the whole kit, I think, was roughly, if I remember correctly, just under $200. Maybe a little more with the compressor and the airbrush. So, it's a good it's a good setup. I really like it. It's what I've used since I started this. So, um, I just wanted to build up some air pressure there. But you see if I push this button on the bottom, right here, you can see my finger getting wet. And what that does is as the air compressor fills with air, condensed air creates moisture so what this does it, it, it traps the initial amount of moisture and then anything that gets past that that goes through my hose will then get trapped in this little guy right here and this is the same concept there's a little spring under here you can see there's a little moisture in there if I push that up any moisture that's trapped will come out so after um, what I'm about to spray what I'll do is I'll let the air, the uh, compressor get up to full pressure. I'll empty both uh, moisture traps ready to spray. So anyway, back to the airbrush. So simply, I'm going to take it, take it apart here, unscrew it here, and I don't have a quick release yet, um, just because I only, I have three airbrushes, but this is the only one I use right now. I have a couple other. Now, um, when you buy an Iwata, and usually with most airbrushes, you get an airbrush wrench. I have since lost mine, so I have to do everything the hard way. So the first thing I do on these guys is I unscrew this back part and I have a paper towel out here. This helps me do two things. Some of the parts are very small. It helps me make sure I can keep track of them all and I know where they are. The next thing I do is this little nut right here is what holds the, um, the needle in. And it's very important that when you work with the needle, when you pull it out, pull it straight out. Because this tip, let's see if I can get in the camera right there is very very fine and if that gets bent you are out of luck and you have to buy a new one and they're not cheap I just replaced my needle set with the tip and I think I spent about forty five fifty dollars for everything uh, the second step is there's a screw right here I'm gonna unscrew that 
And this is what holds the spring in place that allows for the double action, or part of the double action. So that comes out in my hand. And you'll see that there's some thinner in there. I always keep thinner in my airbrush. Here's a spring which controls the uh, the action of the, of the trigger being pulled backwards, right there. And it goes on the towel. This part comes out next, and it's kind of a trick. And this little guy, I don't know what you want to call it, but this is what the trigger sits against. And as you can see, it kind of rocks back and forth. And the needle goes through this, right there. Catch some light. Simply the trigger pulls out, and you'll see a little button here. That's what pushes down in this area to let the air through the airbrush. Take the cap off, that's simple, just pulls off. Now this is where your airbrush uh, wrench comes in handy, and I don't have mine. So, you can see, maybe you can see on mine where I've kind of marred it up here, just using pliers to get it apart. So what I do now, is since I don't have my airbrush, I just get an adjustable wrench, like this. And I just make sure it's on there enough to loosen it. Just give it a little twist. And then unscrew this part. And you can see uh, how dirty this thing is just from the last time, from the last kit that I've loosened on you. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that part. Now this is the tip. This is where the needle comes through. This is where the air and the knee and the paint is combined to come through the airbrush. Um, there's a little piece in here that if it doesn't pop out, I just pull it out really gently with a pair of oops, and I just dropped it. The pair of very small needle nose pliers. And this is another part you have to be very careful with, which I just dropped. Uh, hopefully I didn't dig it up. The very front there, if you can see it in the light, is where the needle comes through. And if that gets dinged up, same thing with the needle, you're kind of screwed. So right now, I'm just going to leave that together. I'm not going to take that apart. Um, sometimes I do. But right now, I'm just going to leave it. Here's the tip with all that sub-assembly that goes inside there. This comes apart right here at the very top like so and then there's another stage that comes apart let's we'll see if I can get it apart here if not I'm just gonna leave it sometimes this is kind of tough this is how I, I dinged up this um, to begin with hold on let me get another pair of pliers there we go this takes a very small turn and that comes apart. Sorry, let me get in front of the camera. Like that. Okay, so now we have basically all the components of our airbrush taken apart. So now what I'm going to do now is I have this little, basically it's just a Tupperware dish. You can see it's kind of grimy. This is what I basically clean my airbrush in. Um, a smart thing to do is go to Michael's or a hobby shop and get yourself a bunch of these little squirt bottles. This used to say lacquer thinner on it, but it's it's worn away. But I have one for lacquer thinner. I have one for turpenoid, which I use for oils. And I have one for acrylic thinner. It's just really easy to store everything. Um, and it allows you to just kind of squirt a little bit in there. So I just squirt a little bit in there. And what I'll do is I'll put my itty bitty parts. And I'll just start letting those soak in the thinner while I work on the bigger parts. So that thinner will kind of start eat away at any leftover paint that's in there from the last, uh, before I cleaned it last time. <clears throat> So, um, another thing to have handy is some paper towels, which I always have a roll right by, which I have right here. And um, I'll take that and I'll just throw some, throw some thinner on it. And the first thing I do is I clean my needle. So I just get it in there, and with the soaked uh, paper towel, just simply, and I just pull it through and kind of twist it. Now, don't go back and forth because a good chance you're going to stab yourself, which this is very sharp. I've done it before. It hurts. <laughs> just consider it like a big hypodermic needle. So I just pull it through like this until it's nice and clean. That part's done. So I put it to the side. Um, oh, I also throw my cap in there too. Because it's important for airbrushing, there's a little hole in the top. And what that does is as the air is going through the airbrush, it creates a partial vacuum with inside this cup. And if that hole gets clogged, no paint will come out. So it's important to keep that 
um, hole cleared to create the negative pressure to push the pit. You know, it's not only the suction part of the air coming through here, but it's also pulling air from outside. It's coming through that hole. So it's sucking and pushing, creating neg negative pressure. So um, I used to paint cars for a living. So I used to use uh, a spray gun, a big trigger thing. That was huge. It'd hold like a quart of paint. So this is basically the same thing, just on a much smaller scale. So uh, with that same paper towel with thinner on it, I'll just go in here and I'll clean off the outside of my cup. I still have some paint left over from the last time I used it. And uh, I just get it soaking really wet. And the outside, you know, it's not as important for the outside, it's more cosmetic, but it's always nice to start with a very a new clean airbrush. Kind of makes you feel like, a, I don't know, makes me feel good at least to have a clean airbrush when I'm starting out. So I'm just going to give this a wipe. And it's been on there for a while, a couple weeks, I think, when I finish that Sanon juice. So let's take a little rubbing. And it doesn't matter what kind of paints you have on the outside of enamel, lacquer, acrylics, lacquer thinner will eat it all. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to use um, expensive enamel thinner or acrylic thinner. I just buy the one gallon jugs from Home Depot. I think it's called Clean Strip Lacquer Thinner. Uh, it's like, I don't know, $13 a gallon, maybe less than that. I could be wrong. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm finding a cold. Now there is an assembly within here that I'm not going to take apart for you this time because I did it last time and there's the spring in here um, let me see if I can get a better light in there for you so you can see it right there and you see I push that down with my pliers actually actually it doesn't pull down it pulls up what this does is when you push the trigger down this little piece comes up and that opens the air valve within the hose but I took this apart last time now you, you'd be surprised how much paint does get gunked up in there um, after a couple models I will take this apart and I'll clean it out but for now I'm just going to leave it but uh, next time I, I do that I'll show you guys also um, it's also important to put a drop of airbrush oil in there and airbrush oil is important to use because it's silicone free if you use an oil, uh, an oil with silicone you will get some nasty nasty results with your paint because paint does not like silicone it won't stick you'll get fish eyes um, just all sorts of weird things will start happening. Oops, sorry, not the camera. So basically, that's it for the big part. Now I do have a set of little brushes I bought. These guys, and these are awesome because even this little smallest one right here will get into the tip of the airbrush. So now that I have the big part clean, I'm gonna set that aside. My cast been soaked. Wipe that guy off. Pretty simple. Let's get all, the, get all the gunk off. Like so. Spring, it's been soaking, it's probably good to go. This part again doesn't really see much paint, but I'll go ahead and give him a wipe. And it doesn't hurt to take your, if you have these little brushes, just dip it in some thinner. And take take the biggest brush that will fit through the opening. Because you really want to get in there and get all the sides and touch everything. So let's go in there and I'll just run it through here a few times. Like so. And that's it for that. Done. This part again really doesn't see much paint, but we're going to go ahead and brush it out anyway. A little thinner. Do that. Good to go. This part, there's a bunch of little holes in here. And I don't have anything small enough to get in there. Let's see if you guys can see them. See those three little holes? That is where the air comes in out of the nozzle right here and combines with the paint to get your pattern, to get your mist. So as the paint comes through the bigger hole, the air comes through those three holes, combines within the airbrush, and comes out. So um, for that, since there's nothing small enough to get in there, I just, you know, just letting it soak in that thinner should be enough. Here's the trigger. I'm not gonna worry about wiping that off because it should be fine. Here's the tip. Take my big brush. And just cleans up real nice. Now, like I mentioned before, I just bought a 